jovial. That was fantastic. And we just met tonight for the first time. Um, I have a feeling it won't be the last <laughs> um, because pretty much everything I have to say is going to piggyback quite nicely with that. Um, and I think that's a good sign, probably. Um, I want to thank Sam uh, uh, from VSET for asking me to speak tonight. Super honored. And I can't see where she landed, but there she is. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Hotel Vermont, for hosting. Thank you, RETN, for filming and getting this out to as many people as possible. So I'm Sarah. I'm 33 years old, just had a birthday. And I, uh, like Jovial, I do not have a background or professional degree in business. I do not hold a background or professional degree in fitness. Yikes. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur in the fitness industry. How did that happen? Um, so if you're sitting there and you're saying, OK, I have this idea of what I want to do, but I don't have any degree that speaks to that. I don't have much experience that speaks to that. Where do I go from here? You're totally fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, as Sam, Sam mentioned, my background is more in academics. I saw myself as a professor of political science, so I do like speaking in front of people. But I thought that I would be lecturing in front of crowds um, uh, in, a, in a different way. And my backup plan, this is great, was to go to law school and be a lawyer. So, so I'm doing great. Um, <laughs> so neither of those things worked out. But um, let's go back to 2010. I was finishing my master's in New York City, and I was totally miserable, really miserable. Um, and something I always went back to for, to keep myself mentally and physically fit and sane was fitness, spinning classes in particular. And I took my first class in 2005 in the Netherlands, as Sam mentioned. And that was just something that was always really, really important to me. And two of my passions, Jovial said, my passions have always been music and sports. And in spin class, those two passions really converge. And if you haven't taken a spin class, your, it's fitness to music. So those are two key components. So I just always had a fantastic time in spin class, and that was really important to me. So I'm seeing myself as completely miserable, questioning everything I've ever known up until that point. I had recently turned 25, and for many of you know, the quarter century life crisis occurs. <laughs> and I was definitely there. And I was rethinking every single thing I had ever been taught and everything I ever, ever thought I was supposed to do with my life. Um, I'm definitely one of those people that's very um, rule-oriented and by the book. And my life was crashing down on me, and I was crying a lot at that time. <laughs> so I decided to pack up from New York City and come back to Burlington, Vermont. I'm a native Vermonter myself, but I'm from the South. I'm from Brattleboro. And I had to hit the reset button and decide what I was going to do and where I was going to go from there. And the first thing I did, I got a job working for the federal government, so that was great. That put food on the table. But I had to find spin class because I needed something for my mental health. And the reality was I could not find what I was looking for. And so I thought, well, I think I could do a better job. And so if you have something that you think you could do better, you might be able to. And you might be able to create that space where it doesn't exist. So I did a lot of thinking. I kind of looked around. Yes, you could take some spinning classes at the gym, but there wasn't any boutique fitness geared towards this particular passion of mine. And, and I really did think, I think I can do this. And so then I needed to put my money where my mouth was and do a little bit of research. This is back in 2011, so we're talking six years ago. And the business is just over four years, so you have a sense of the time frame. So I was really thinking serious about getting this started. And, um, and this is where it becomes important. So you've got an idea. You've got a concept. How do you make that concept a reality? The business plan is crucial. Planning is crucial. Knowing that you can't plan for everything is crucial. Um, I love what you said about think of your worst day. <laughs> Agencies will be knocking on your door. You're going to have to pay taxes. People are going to shut you down. You're going to have to move. You're going to lose money. You're going to make money. It is a roller coaster. So you have to be adaptable. If you're someone that likes routine and you like predictability, entrepreneurship might not be the best <laughs> decision for you. It is very, it's highly unpredictable, but high risk is high reward. And I can definitely say that. Being passionate for something. I knew when I was miserable at my job and I hated punching the clock every day, I just wanted to do something that made me happy. Right? It wasn't about making money. And I think that the most successful people start from that mindset that I didn't set out to, I'm, I'm gathering from your talk, she didn't set out to, to institute a multi-million dollar company, but look where she is now. She set out to live her truth, live your path, walk your happiness. So if you start from that good place 
good things will follow. The universe is really welcoming to that. So really listen to that inner thought. And I think rethinking the business conversation and trusting your gut and your intuition is also very important. It's something we're told not to do. And it's really important. So know your market. Uh, know where you live, know your demographic. I knew I wanted to start a cycling studio. I'm thinking, I live in Burlington, Vermont. People are fit, they care about health and wellness. Okay, that works. Winters are long, usually cold. That works in my favor, I have an indoor studio. And there's no existing market, right? There's no boutique fitness studio, there's no competition right now. I could be first in and a leader in the industry, that's great. If there's existing competition, don't let that stop you by any means, but it's great to be first in and really set the standard and set the tone. So I did my research, and then you kind of find out, I need some money, <laughs> right? I have a great idea, I have a great idea, but how do I get the funding? And I think for you guys, I'm, my guess is that in very practical terms, you want to figure out, well, how do, how do, I, how do I do that? Where, do, where does the money come from, right? Money doesn't grow on trees, that's a really cliche statement. So some of you are going to be able to get traditional force, sources of funding, some of you non-traditional. I was turned down by the bank multiple times. So right then and there for some people, a lot of doors are going to close in your face and that's just the reality check. And so you have to really get creative and you have to, this is where the passion comes in and really believing in, in, in what you want to do because you're going to hear a lot of no's. And there are going to be a lot of doubters along the way, but you have to be able to believe in yourself and really get creative. So. I'm a 27-year-old at the time. I have no collateral, I have no assets, I own nothing, but I have a lot of student debt. <laughs> you think a bank is gonna loan me money? I don't think so. So that didn't happen, but there's great organizations. There's the SBA, there's a lot of local organizations here that you can appeal to. There's VC, venture capital, a lot of investors you can pitch your idea. There's crowdsource funding, Kickstarter. I mean, things have only gotten better, right, in the last several years. And then there's just good old friends and family. I sort of got stuck pleading to a few key members of my family for a few thousand dollars. Please believe in me, please invest in me, I'll pay you back. And I did pay them back, I just wanna let you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of scaling, thank you very much. They're happy. Um, <laughs> um, but in terms of scal scalable business, I love to use this analogy. You've got your, if you had unlimited funds, your idea, gosh, you could come up with some amazing things if money wasn't an object, right? We all could. And then reality sets in. What's your starter home look like, right? So I aim to open a business with twenty-five dollars to $30,000 of startup cash, and I did. I couldn't build my dream home from day one, but that was okay. I'm getting closer to that every single day. The business has doubled since I, since I started. But I opened with a small amount of bikes, 20, um, I did my research, knew what I would need to, to eventually turn a profit, right? And um, I sourced them used and refurbished instead of brand new. Brand new would be nice, but I couldn't afford it. I uh, used and refurbished audio equipment. New would have been nice, but I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford a general contractor. I couldn't afford walls. Um, <laughs> this is a true story. Um, you guys know where Soyo and uh, Soyo is? Yeah, you get your frozen yogurt there, New World Tortilla. If you ever went into Soyo a few years ago, you would hear Tupac and Biggie blasting um, from the walls emanating as you're bringing your children in to get frozen yogurt. That was us. I had 1,200 square feet. Um, no walls, just a bank of Ikea cubbies it was as served as a partition, double duty and served as cubbies. Some of you were there in the early days and you remember that. Um, so I couldn't afford a lot of things that I can afford now, but thinking about starting your business and scaling it small and what you can afford, only borrow what you think you can afford to lose. And that's really important. $25,000 debt is a lot easier than $250,000 debt, so on and so forth. It doesn't mean, that's not to rain on anybody's parade, it doesn't mean that you can't get to that gold standard, but just pacing yourself and being really smart about that is really an important piece of advice that I can share. Get as much free advertising as you can. Sarah, I just saw you're trying to run away. But <laughs> um, I reached out to local media, and seven days, uh, the author is in the room. She didn't know I was going to mention this, but she wrote a fantastic article. I didn't pay her to, to do that, um, but we got some great press the week that I opened. Free press, um, which was amazing. So <laughs> I'm just teasing you. She's a fantastic writer, by the way. Um, so as much free, free press and networking as you can do, and networking, that's key, right? Helping each other, um, sisters especially helping each other, um, 
it's so important to share ideas, to share your skills, and seeing one of us rise up helps others potentially rise up. And even if you see this person as a competitor in your field, if they're in the same industry, we're all in this together, and I can tell you there's enough business to go around. There's plenty to go around, and the more we can help each other. So bootstrapping, if, you, if your best friend's a CPA and you have questions, ask, lean in, reach out. It's so important. So if you are strapped for cash, that's going to be really important to do. And just once you get started, do as many networking events as you can. That's why I'm looking forward to working with you in the future, because I see so many possibilities and potential. Um, and just really keeping your mind open to the possibilities, because things are going to come up that you maybe haven't thought of. I'd say that your biggest investment is in yourself, right? So believing in yourself, believing in your project and your passion, working hard, obviously, kind of goes without saying. But you're going to be putting so many hours into the planning and prep times that by a thousand once you get started. <laughs> if you thought you've never slept before, wait till you start a business. And that's really where that love and that passion comes from because you're going to be doing it all the time and that's really important. So I would just close by saying working together and um, really being open and honest about what your needs are. There are times where you're going to need help and recently I've reached out to my community and needed some help and the love and the generosity just came back a hundredfold. Um, so really being a good steward in your community is, is wonderful and, and working together and not against each other is great. And Burlington is just such a wonderful place to launch a business, so I wish you guys the best of luck and happy to answer your questions coming up. Thank you.